everybody? Paul Baker with another episode of Legendary Muscle. And today I got Ramon and his 86 Monte Carlo. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. First thing I gotta say, guys, is this car is absolutely stunning. It's an amazing car. Thank you. Question for you is how long have you had it and when did you where did you get it? I've had a car for 14 years. Oh wow. Um my buddy I went to school with, his granddad had a he told me his granddad had an 86 Monte Carlo. Um, believe it or not, I bought this car for seven hundred and fifty dollars. Holy smokes! And drove it home. Yeah, drove it home. I mean, it was all original. Um, the only thing that wasn't original, it had bucket seats in it. They weren't even bolted down, so I guess they, oh, I guess geez. they took the bench seats out and threw some bucket seats in just to have something to ride in. But I took those out. I put the fact I went to a junkyard and found factory bench seats, put them back in, and rolled like that for a while. Damn, yeah. Um, eventually. I did want bucket seats, <laughs> so I ended up finding some bucket seats that would actually fit. Um, it wasn't the ones that's in it now. Um, I pulled some out of a uh, S10 and had them oh, reupholstered wow. to match the rest of the interior, and I rode like that for a while. And um, but this has been my daily driver for the last 14 years. Man, a lot of these cars that I see, guys, I see them at the drag strip or the low rider. What made you use this model? I mean, pro touring. What made you do that? Um, I personally feel like pro touring is the best thing that ever happened to muscle cars. See, I wanted to build something that I could enjoy in multiple genres of, of car culture, whether it be the track, whether it just be daily street driving, whether it be a car show, you know, whether it be a drag and drive event or, you know, a traveling event such as power tour. I wanted a car that could do everything. So I didn't want to just stick to one genre no knock against the race cars but i want i always wanted to be able to enjoy my car for more than just 10 seconds oh yeah well that's that's good now the body style you could have had anything you wanted what made you go with the g body well when i was 14 um i was still working at burger king um i was making minimum wage <laughs> um my uncle worked in tampa and one of his best friends had a used car dealership and he had a silver 86 Monte Carlo SS at this dealership mm -hmm. and I wanted it. Yeah. So my uncle told me to give him money every time I get paid. He'd take it up to the guy and it, it was pretty much me working my way to Just paying it getting off. that Monte Carlo. Oh, yeah. So something happened at the guy's shop. I'm still really unsure of what actually happened, but I was told that the shop got broken into, um, it got set on fire, oh, some shoot. cars got damaged. Um, including the 86 Monte Carlo. Oh, man. So, so did you lose all your money that you put into um, it? No, I got my money back, but I didn't want the money. I wanted the car. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? I was working extra hours. I was working overtime. You know, we, we've all been there where, you know, minimum wage, overtime, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's not much. Especially young like that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't out partying. I wasn't out. You know, doing what regular You're teenagers do. You're in the gym, do. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> on guns, man. I feel small. <laughs> but, you know, I was working. And, then, you yeah. know, I was working towards something. And I really wanted that car. So, um, I finally, when my buddy told me about his granddad's 86 Monte Carlo, I saw it as my chance to, you know, retrieve the one that got away. Yeah. That's so, true. So that's why you went back to it. Absolutely. Now with the color, what is the actual color of this car? This is a GM gunmetal gray. This is a darker gray than what was on the silver one yeah. um, that I never got a chance to enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, but I really wanted a dark, aggressive color. And I did not want to paint the car black because I knew I was going to drive it daily. And black is just a very hard color oh, to yeah. maintain. Yeah. So gunmetal gray gives you the aggression of a black paint job without the high maintenance. That's true. So it was a perfect color, easy color choice. Oh yeah. Now, when I was walking around the car earlier, see the roll cage. Yeah. Tell me, is this a, do you race this thing or what? Um, I built this car to be able to do road courses and autocross. Yeah. Um, I'm still, I haven't gotten a chance to get on the uh, autocross track yet. I'm still kind of oh, in the working out the kink stage. Mm -hmm. Um, I had, like I said, I've had the car for 14 years. I've been driving it every day, but there was a five-year gap between 2017 and 2022 when I took the car off the road yeah. because I got in a front-end collision. Oh, shoot. Um, so I ended up taking the front clip apart. Um, I found a, literally, it was weird how it happened. I got in an accident, and the next day I found a front clip on Craigslist. Somebody was parting Everything out. happens for a reason. Yeah, somebody was parting out their Monte Carlo SS <laughs> in Marion Oaks. And I literally got off work that Friday. I got in an accident on a Thursday. I got off work that Friday after seeing the ad. And my buddy took me out there. 
and um, we literally pulled the whole front clip off of this monocrome. So that's what started the whole rust. That's what started. Is that accident? So that accident happened for a good, a good reason. You know, and I and I wouldn't feel right doing this if I didn't, you know, shout out my buddy Paul. His name's Paul Susino. Yeah. Um, we pretty much built this car in his backyard. You know, without him, I, this car would not be on the road. Also, my friend Marcus, he works with me. He's the one that helped me do the wiring. Sweet. Um, so you, you know, got that's a lot pretty of connections, much, man. That helped. Yeah, you. that's. But you know, me and Paul kind of got stuck on the wiring because neither one yeah. of us liked to do wiring or was good at it at all. Right. But Marcus is like a wiring guru, so there you go. Man. Um, we were able to all bump heads and get the car put together. So always got the good friends like that. All right, this is almost a stupid question, but the motor. Is it stock? Um, no. <laughs> All right, well, I think we're going to take a closer look, so we're going to go ahead and take a peek under the hood. Holy smokes. All right, there's a lot here going on, so just go ahead and explain to me what what you have going on here. Um, this is a Blueprint uh, 383 Stroker. Oh, my gosh. Um, it was a 430 horse in the crate. They built it nice, but I knew it wasn't going to have the sound that I wanted. So as foolish as this may sound, I took a brand new camshaft out of this engine when it first came in and put a bigger cam in because I knew it was going to have that rough idle that I wanted. So 430 horsepower wasn't big enough for it. <laughs> horsepower, horsepower would have definitely been enough, but yeah. I, there's a sound I'm always looking for, and I, and I knew I wasn't going to get it with the cam that they sent with it. So so you gotta, you got to know a lot about engines to be, okay, this is the sound I want, this is... I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, I do a lot of research. Before I order something, I'm on, you know, whether it's Summit, whether it's Jags, I do days, weeks, months worth of research before I actually pull the trigger on it because I want to make sure, you know, I do it once and do it right. God. So tell me, these two hoses coming off, what is that for? Um, that's actually for the functional ram air. Um, I got rid of the high beam headlights. Um, these LED lights that I have, they pretty much do all functions. They do high beam, low beam, park, and turn signal. Oh, so there was so no reason for headlights. Yeah. Um, I went to Lowe's and got gutter guard for the <laughs> for the mesh screen here. Yeah. Because I didn't want to leave them wide open because it would suck in a bunch of bugs and other trash. So um, I took the gutter guard and cut it and glued it to the inside of my headlight bezels and then Jeez. put everything back in to make it all look factory. And it actually... It's a it's true functional ram air. My goodness. All right, now explain these bad boys. That like on the side there, all those plugs. Well, what is right, that for? Right here, this is a relay station that I made out of ABS plastic. Um, it's not 100% finished. So I still have to make a cover for it so that you won't see any of the wires there. Um, and then on this side, um, I mounted my MSD um, ignition box. Jeez, man. And this car does have air conditioning. Um, it's got a vintage air setup um, with the compressor. And um, the way they do the setup, um, all the air conditioning stuff that was usually bulky right here, yeah. it's all behind the dash now. Holy so all you really see is the wires coming out of the so uh, to, firewall. With this kind of a setup with this motor, did you have to do anything with the transmission? Or is it a stock transmission? No, yes. With this kind of a setup, the stock transmission would not have lasted long at all. So there's a Turbo 400, but Jeez. the interesting part about the Turbo 400 is it has a gear vendor's tail shaft on it. Okay. So it's a Turbo 400 with overdrive. Holy smokes. So that's a lot of time and effort just under the hood. A lot. A lot Let of alone from inside, which we haven't even seen yet. Absolutely. A lot of time right here. Well, the only other thing is, hey, man, can you give us a spin? Absolutely. All right, guys, we're going to take this bad boy for a run. I tell you what, this is a beautiful car, man. Thank you, man. I That's appreciate good. it. It's so strong, man. You just feel the power. Dang, uh, the inside is amazing, man. I, mean, I appreciate it. Thank everything you. about this car, the hood, is that one piece? Yeah, this is a one piece fiberglass hood. Um, it's a functional four, uh, four inch cowl induction. Um, it's uh, E Harwood makes it. Man, it looks good. I mean, it looks like it would come so close to that glass. Um, when I lift the hood, it does come pretty close, but it doesn't touch. Oh my gosh. So, so tell me about this interior, man. I, like, this is amazing. Um, yeah, none of it is stock. Um, I try to use as much of the uh, factory features as possible yeah. with my own custom touch because my whole theme with this car was to be custom yet simple. Yeah, because this even matches the seats. Right, yeah, all of this, this is a carbon fiber wrap. I have carbon fiber wrap behind the gauges. 
I have it incorporated in the center console. And actually, if you look at the bottom of the door panel, it's incorporated in the bottom Holy of the door smoke. panel. Holy well. I mean, you got SS in the doors. Yeah, in the middle. Yeah, the center that's center console, custom. door panels, all oh, that's custom. Um, I could have went with power windows, but Man, I wanted I, I wanted to try to keep the wiring to a minimum, especially inside the doors. Oh, yeah. So I left everything manual in the doors. Um, the gauges are all Autometer C-Series gauges all the way throughout. Um, everything's in a factory location. I used to have the big tack with the shift light oh, oh, hanging off the column, and I still like that look. Yeah. But I really wanted to go for a clean, you know, pro touring type look with this car because it is a real pro touring build. Oh yeah. So I didn't. I wanted everything to be in a factory spot. Now tell me about that. You said the dimmer switch. What is that? You said you, you did yes. something to make it different. Well, like I mentioned earlier, it does have a gear vendor's tail shaft. Yeah. So in order to engage the overdrive, like right now, we're in third gear. We're probably going about 60 miles an hour. Yeah. As you can see, I'm probably at around 3,000. I just, just hit the overdrive, it. and now I'm down to about 2,300 RPM. So it's no longer a dimmer hour. light switch. Nope. So oh, this car awesome. didn't even come factory with a dimmer switch. Wow. But I installed one here in order to uh, activate the overdrive. Oh, so as you can see, the overdrive is engaged right now. We're going about 60 miles an hour. We're only at around 2,000 RPM. So that's pretty awesome. Also, you, you clip it down to go. Yep. So now the overdrive is disengaged. I usually disengage it if I get ready to change speeds. But what made you do that? Like, passing gear. Well, I did not want to use a 700 R4 transmission. Yeah. Mainly because, you know, I've had bad experiences with them. They don't really handle good under a lot of torque. Yeah. Um, so I did want a transmission that I wasn't going to have problems. So Gosh. Um, I wanted, <laughs> you know, I wanted a transmission that could handle something like that. So yeah. um, I did a lot of research. I was always curious on these drag wheat guys on how they were able to take these two-speed power glide transmissions, yeah. run down the track, and then get on the highway. So I did a lot of research. I found out they were using gear vendors tail shafts. So I got one for my Turbo 400. So I have the best of both worlds. I have a transmission that I don't have to worry about braking, and I have overdrive. Man, that's awesome. So now you said this is an everyday driver. Yes, sir. You have to be shooting out some serious loot on gas, right? <laughs> I mean, seriously, this um, is a tough motor. Well, this car is fuel injected. It's got Fitech fuel injection. Um, the computer for the fuel injection is right here. Oh my gosh. Um, I can make changes on the fly if I'm not happy with the idle. If I'm not happy with the AFR, I can just make a few changes right oh, here. Um, so with the fuel injection, I say probably anywhere between 10 to 15 miles to the gallon, depending on That's not bad. how heavy of a foot I have that day or that yeah. week. So, Man, I'll, I'll be honest with you, of all of my shows, I have never seen an inside this detailed. I've never seen the gauges like this. The inside, I mean, all this just matches with everything. It's like amazing. A lot of brainstorming. Um, I'm a huge guy on details. Oh, yo, you Small can Small details make the difference. You know, I, I didn't want to take this car down to the frame and do a frame off on this car just to build a Monte Carlo right. that somebody else can have. You want to be different. I wanted to be yeah. different. You know, yeah. I didn't want, you know, I, no matter what your credit score is, no matter how much money you have, I, I don't want you to be able to go and buy this anywhere. This is a car that has to be built. It's a one of a kind. It's a one of a kind car. You can't go and buy this from anybody. Oh my gosh. All right. Anything else you want to talk about before we, we come to the end of our episode? Um, all my fellow car guys and gals out there, um, if you're currently working on projects, just stick with it. Um, everything takes time. It takes patience. For sure. Um, and just, just enjoy it. That's right. Guys, with the dedication that he has, anyone can have a nice car. You just got to work hard for it. And he's living proof of that. I mean, look, at a young age, you already had set in your mind, I want a Monte Carlo. Absolutely. So, guys, if you like this episode, make sure you like it and subscribe. But we're running out of time. So, next time, until next time, everybody, with Legendary Muscle. Have a good one.